A video game based on a trading card game is a strange concept. The whole appeal of cards to me is that they are a real object that I can hold in my hand. When you put the cards in a virtual world, I feel disconnected from them. I'll never feel the same way about a list of cards on a screen than I would about my real binder full of treasure. Yet, Pokemon trading card game for the Game Boy and its sequel, well, the fan translation of that sequel, are games I find myself coming back to from time to time. The reason I revisit this game is because while I have binders and binders of these cards, the amount of times I have actually played a real life card match are few and far between. It just isn't easy to cobble together 60 real life cards into a usable deck against another 60 real life cards. With a video game, it's much easier to just pick it up and start a card battle without too much hassle. In Pokemon trading card game for the Game Boy, the collecting of the cards takes a back seat while the actual matches are put to the forefront. Now, there's going to be a new virtual card experience, but it seems that it's going to be focused far more on the collecting aspect. Not much has been revealed about Pokemon trading card game Pocket, but I can already see some massive red flags. So join me as we reflect on the original Pokemon trading card game for the Game Boy and ask ourselves if this mobile game is really the best direction for these virtual trading cards. Let's begin by talking about Pokemon trading card game Pocket. The trailer opens on a guy drinking milk for some reason, and his phone dings to let him know that he's got a pack. We then see some different openings of different Pokemon cards. While some of the artworks of these cards resembles real cards, these are not the same cards from sets that we can collect in the real world. Let's take a look at this Cubone here. It uses the same artwork as the Cubone from Forbidden Light, but it is in fact not the same card. The already released version of the card has the attack Burdensome Bone, which does 40 damage, whereas the other Cubone has the attack Growl, that doesn't do any damage at all and has some effect that I currently can't read. The most notable difference is that these cards lack resistances. They only have weaknesses and retreat costs. These cards are also dealing in much smaller numbers than the power creep monstrosities we know of today. Of the cards we see in the trailer, Charizard RDX has the largest HP at 180. Compare that to the current Charizard EX released in Pokemon card 151, which has 330 HP. It is not known if these cards will only exist in a virtual world or if there is going to be physical cards printed alongside them. Since these cards do not fit in with the current meta and mostly reuse artworks of already established cards, I am going to guess that these cards are virtual only. So now that we're familiar with the cards we're going to be using in this game, what do we do with these cards? Beyond opening packs, you can also trade and battle other players. The trading feature may not be available at launch, so I guess we can remove the T from TCG until that update drops. There are also quick battles, as it puts it. It seems these battles follow the same TCG rules that we know and love. There are standard energy costs, and it's confirmed that there will be at least supporter cards, which implies that there will be other trainer cards too. What is not yet known is if these decks will be your standard 60 card decks, or if one of the win conditions will be to take six prize cards like in the regular game. Since in the announcement you see two players in different places, one in a car and the other at a park, this confirms that you can play against people even if you aren't in the same place. I'm curious to know if the game allows you to battle random people online or if it even has some CPU trainers that you can go against as well. So how do you get cards in this new game? You're allowed to open two packs a day at no cost. The way this is worded makes me think that there may be a way to open more packs a day and it may or may not involve a cost of some sort. I want to give the game the benefit of the doubt here because I have not yet seen their pricing on this and to be fair they did completely avoid microtransactions in Pokemon TCG Live, a decision that I am thankful for. Two packs a day does not sound like a lot, but that really depends on how many cards there are total within the game. How many days will it take for you to put together a proper deck and how many more days will it take to put together a really good deck? There are also immersive cards, which are special cards that show you a whole little painting within the card itself. 
They're cool for sure, but I think the presence of this and the fact that it was so highlighted in the trailer says that this app is not going to be too deep gameplay wise and this feature is meant to make it seem like it's more than it is. We don't know that for sure. For all I know, this game could be really dense and this is nothing more than a bonus feature. Now let's compare Pokemon Trading Card Game Pocket to Pokemon Trading Card Game for the Game Boy. Here's how Pokemon Trading Card Game works. The game has the first three original sets, base set, jungle, and fossil, with some other extra cards thrown in here and there. With these cards, you craft a 60 card deck and go up against other NPCs within the game. The goal of the game is to defeat all of the Pokemon clubs, each based around a certain type, and challenge the Pokemon card masters. In this game, you don't have access to every card right out of the gate. In fact, you have access to very few cards when you begin. You can choose a starter deck based on one of the three starters, which includes just enough cards to hold your own against some of the lower level trainers. There is one main way to obtain cards in the game, which is through defeating NPCs. If you want certain cards, you have to go up against RNG and dueling the same characters over and over again. To make this worse, the cards are not divided into base set, jungle, and fossil like they are in the real world. Instead, the cards are split evenly between four sets, Colosseum, Evolution, Mystery, and Laboratory. This was likely because base set is much larger than Jungle and Fossil, while the four sets in this game all have nearly the same numbers of cards. The problem with these sets not being the same as their real-world counterparts is that you don't know which cards you may be getting from them. With the internet, this is no longer a problem. You can just look them up on Bulbapedia. But remember, this game was released in the 90s, and I bet a lot of kids in the 90s were annoyed that they couldn't just whip out their card list that came with the starter decks to figure out what cards they could get. Once you do figure out which set has good cards like Hitmonchan or Bill, you'll then begin the process of grinding out matches until you get the cards you need. For some of the more common cards, like Trainers, you'll eventually get them at a leisurely pace. But if the card you want is a rare and you need four of them, you're gonna have a rough time going up against these Pokemon card underlings over and over again. What would have improved this immensely was if the game offered a fuller map and gave the player more interesting ways to get themselves more cards. Cards. Maybe it could have even left out a lot or all of the RNG elements, but maybe that would make it too alien from trading card games, which do revolve around gambling for your favorite card. The main appeal I find in playing this game is experiencing the meta of Gen 1 Pokemon cards. I wasn't around in the 90s, so I never got the chance to go to tournaments when these cards were all the rage. And I think that's really the value in this game, the preservation of a card game, which if you were to properly play today, would require you to play with and possibly damage expensive now vintage cards. That preservation only applies to Generation 1 because they never made another Pokemon trading card game game. The main reason I think the Game Boy version is better is because it offers a sense of progression in gaining cards and going up against increasingly difficult NPCs. We know for sure that the progression of obtaining cards in Pokemon trading card game Pocket will come with daily pack openings. And and possibly microtransactions. While I think I can find enjoyment in getting new cards each day, I much prefer the concept of gaining more cards through game progression. What we don't know for sure is if the game will include NPCs that increase in difficulty. If the entire game revolves around battling other random trainers around the world, then honestly, there is really no point in getting this game. You'll just get cooked in every battle by people who waited for, or paid for, the highest quality cards and built the best decks. I have that same problem in Pokemon TCG Live, which gives you good cards at a snail's pace, meaning that you'll always find yourself at a disadvantage against players who have more free time or more money to buy code cards. Here's what Pokemon really needs. Two distinct kinds of Pokemon trading card game video games, and neither of them should be Pokemon trading card game Pocket or Pokemon trading card game Live. The first kind of Pokemon trading card game game should be a straight up simulator of every card in existence so players can try out every deck against every other deck. It should be a game that you pay for with money, you know, like a normal game. The Pokemon trading card game simulator that I mentioned already exists in a fan-made capacity, so Pokemon is just leaving money on the table by not making an official one. I really don't see the point of all the code cards and opening packs online. Okay, there's some enjoyment in building up a virtual collection and 
the kind of game I'm suggesting would put the kibosh on that. That's why this Pokemon trading card game simulator I'm suggesting should exist in tandem with another game, a Pokemon trading card game adventure, where you travel through a region building up a card collection and battling your way through increasingly difficult NPCs. I do see that there are a lot of positives in having a simple Pokemon trading card game on my phone. Maybe Pokemon trading card game pocket will be an amazing time. Maybe it will have NPCs and a solid sense of progression. Maybe it won't have any microtransactions and will just tell you to wait until tomorrow, you little gambling addict. Even in the best case scenario with this game, it tells us this. Pokemon is not interested in giving us real access to all of the cards they have, and they are not interested in preserving the metagame games of their old cards. I'm glad the fans are going to pick up the slack on that, but should we really have to? Hey, if you think I have some good suggestions in this video, maybe you'd want to check out this other video where I talk about different versions of Johto's bug catching contest that we should have had. Or if you want to know more about Pokemon history, take a look at this video about how the early Pokemon games used to include gambling references and why they don't anymore. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.